So this video is about environmental legislation and regulation with regards to sustainability and environmental concerns. Now, there's been a series of laws brought out, probably quite recently really, but mainly over the last sort of 30 or so years, um, that have been designed to effectively well, save our planet, okay, improve the sustainability of our resources, ensure that these are sort of around for many, many years, and to ensure our effect on the, the planet is reduced by as much as possible. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Packaging Directive. Now, in 1994, um, and it was amended in 2004, basically, there was a directive brought out relating to the packaging of goods. Now, what this was designed to do was to reduce waste of initial packaging design. Lots of packaging, for example, I mean, I always like to use the example of an Easter egg, um, is massively overpackaged, or it always was, where you'd open up the Easter egg and you'd find... There was a plastic vacuum forming inside a printed card box and the egg itself was wrapped in foil. Now, this becomes very, very difficult for the user to recycle the product. In some cases, composite materials were being used, which obviously can't be recycled very easily and therefore can only go to incineration. And there was a need really to reduce this sort of level of waste. And what you'll probably notice quite recently uh, in the last few years in terms of Easter eggs, for example, is the fact that the packaging has reduced considerably or they are now focusing more on sustainable resources such as card, in some cases perhaps even unprinted or unbleached card to reduce that impact it's going to have and make sure it's recyclable and renewable and obviously sustainable. Now the packaging directive as I said is all about trying to encourage consumers to recycle, encourage them to reuse and to reduce the amount of toxic materials used in packaging. There is obviously a target when the directive first came about uh, for 2008 for 60% of all packaging waste to be recovered and a minimum of 55% of that to be recycled. Another example of where packaging consumers are being encouraged to reuse the packaging that I've seen recently is on um, sweet tins, chocolate sweet tins effectively, where there is a basically a label on the bottom of the tin that basically says, I can be used as a plant pour or as a storage device of some sort. So it's encouraging users to reuse the item that way. And obviously in terms of recycling, you'll notice that on all packaging they will have the, the standard SPI recycling symbols so that consumers are aware of what polymers are being used or if it's card or aluminium or, or so on and so forth. Now, the second directive I want to talk about is the Energy Labelling Directive. Now, this was introduced in 1996 and obviously goes on a series of electrical and electronic devices. Now, it was initially set up with a range from A to G, but as you'll have noticed quite recently, it now goes up to A star, A star, star, and so on and so forth, as products have obviously become more and more energy efficient and therefore have passed the, the, the grades needed initially to be given the A grades. Now, what this basically does, again, is ensures that consumers are familiar with the fact that if they buy appliances that have higher ratings they're obviously going to reduce their energy consumption and this has kind of twofold benefits number one obviously we've got the benefits to the planet because if we're using electricity that maybe comes from a fossil fuel powered plant it's going to have a, an impact on co2 levels and the other benefit for the consumer is the fact they're going to save money so by using less electricity you're obviously going to use uh, less uh, units of electricity through your you know domestic appliances and things like this now the third one I'm going to talk about, which is the End of Life Vehicle Directive, or ELVD. This was introduced in 2003, and again, it was encouraging the reuse and the recycling of waste, but this time from vehicles. Now, it also restricts the amounts of toxic metals, uh, heavy metals in cars, and it means that manufacturers must label all the sort of plastic parts inside to help with recycling, again, using those sort of coded symbols. You might see some symbols have a little arrow pointing to a particular number relating to the SBI code or as I say the classic sort of recycling symbols with the three arrows circling around the number to help consumers or to help manufacturers dismantle this and recover the waste. This is uh, in the UK I'd, I'd say another sort of thing that was linked to this was the kind of scrappage scheme that came out recently where consumers were given incentives to scrap their old vehicles in order to buy a newer vehicle that obviously gave out less CO2 emissions and was therefore green greener or had a lesser carbon footprint on the environment. And the other thing that relates to this is the new laws regarding MOT certificates 
and obviously the congestion charge zones in London okay so the congestion charge was set up effectively to reduce the emissions of cars in London and obviously cars that have particularly low emissions or are powered by a greener source that doesn't emit CO2 such as electricity or certain hybrid vehicles which are very low on CO2 use as well are exempt from paying that toll to encourage consumers again to be more efficient and again we have that knock-on effect of it being less damaging to the environment in that sense. The other thing relating to MOTs obviously is the fact that the, the lower emissions your car has the less that you're going to pay for MOT. So again it's that twofold advantage to consumers so not only are they being more environmentally thoughtful I suppose of the planet but they're also saving money through MOT or through not having to pay congestion charges and so on and so forth. In addition to this there is the waste electrical and electronic equipment directive that's a big word obviously but it's abbreviated to we or w e e e this was implemented in 2006 and it encourages manufacturers to develop products for electrical or electronic products so that they can be dismantled and the parts can be reused or recycled and obviously manufacturers also have to include instructions or advice to consumers so that they don't discard the equipment carelessly. You might have seen the label with the uh, dustbin with a cross on top of it that tells them not to dispose of it in that way and rather take it back to collection points. And you may have also noticed there's been a lot of advertising from retailers, places like Curry's and PC World, various different electrical and electronic retailers that basically offer free collection okay and this obviously has the benefit to you the consumer because you don't have to worry about disposing of the parts responsibly and potentially gaining a fine if you're putting the wrong uh, waste in certain uh, bins um, but it also has the benefit for the manufacturer because it aids them in meeting their responsibilities to reclaim and uh, repurpose certain electronic equipment. You'll also notice this has kind of driven a rise in companies which buy the old mobile phones and again they repurpose this technology for perhaps third world countries so that rather than remaking phones for these purposes they are taking out the old circuit boards the old maybe screens and things like this and then giving it uh, additional life post life cycle now in addition to this you've also got the restriction of hazardous substances directive or sometimes abbreviated to ROHS or ROSH. Okay this was introduced in 2006 and it's a European Union directive that again is banning the use of some hazard materials and hazardous chemicals such as lead, mercury and cadmium in electronic equipment. Now certain of electronic equipment which is particularly bad for this sort of thing is things like batteries, fluorescent tubing which obviously contains mercury, cathode ray tubes which are the sort of older style monitors with the large backs on them or older TVs and things like polychlorinated biphenyl which has lots of health effects on humans if it's if it's brought into the uh, environment either by the soil or the air or the water or something like this. This ROHS directive is again all about safeguarding human health because we don't want lots of these heavy metals and toxic chemicals being leaching into our soil and particularly damaging crops or waterways or, or wherever. You may have also noticed on certain products, electronic products and things like this, that you might see an eco label. It looks a little bit like a flower, I suppose, with the stars and the E for the European Union surrounding it. And this was a, a sort of a voluntary symbol that again sort of shows consumers that the product can be will have a reduced impact on the um, environment so again it's sort of encouraging users in that sense if you wanted to do further sort of research into the area of various different directives uh, other things that factor into manufacturers minds i suppose when they're designing are things like the battery directive of 2006 which again is about sort of reducing hazardous substances and chemicals in batteries the Landfill Directive of 1999, which is preventing environmental pollution through landfill, again, sort of pollution of earth and water and even air through sort of disposed products or disposed materials. The Renewable Energy Directive of 2009, now this was uh, an interesting one that may have impacted 
quite a lot in line with also the energy efficiency directive of 2012 and basically certain countries were targeted to kind of try to reduce or cut the amount of co2 emissions within their countries now this was done and it relates to many of the other directives through things like the end of vehicle life directive and anywhere else relating to the reduction of sort of co2 emissions and things like this i suppose also the uh, the waste electrical and electronic equipment directive and also the energy labeling directive because obviously as a consumer if you want to if you're, if you're encouraged to reduce your energy output this has a follow-on effect to obviously reduce the amount of co2 being developed now all of these legislations or regulations are in place and as i said they should have a great environmental benefit and obviously there's a benefit to the consumer but you could also consider what sometimes termed as the rebound effect although we're making products that are so much more efficient and so much better such as cars that give out less emissions and uh, perhaps uh, refrigerators that can use much less power because there's a saving to the consumer we obviously buy these products and the, the the main issue or the rebound effect i suppose is what happens to the old product so by making things so much better we've got the knock-on effect of well people buy all these new products that are more efficient what do we do with the old products and are they disposed of responsibly you know and are we simply creating more of a problem by manufacturing more and more products and using more resources, even if we're making you know, uh, better products or more efficient products.